Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the... Literalist Reactions. I hope you get a kick out of watching it. <laughs> you had your su- tongue sticking out real weird there, buddy. Are you rolling? Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome, everyone, to another Literalist Reaction video. I'm Dave. With me, as always, my good buddy, music lover, John Doe. Oh, John. Oh, Dave. Uh, you know, I feel like it's just become a game for me personally to try to start the video when you're doing something weird. Yeah, I... I... Can appreciate that. Um, you also give me a lot of opportunities, so it, like it's, yeah, I don't have to I, wait long. <laughs> just know I'll get even. That's all. Just know that I you know, <laughs> it up in here, and and then like a, it it triggers a switch in my head that says it's time to bust on Dave, and uh, so that'll happen one of these days. Finally, uh, Dave. <laughs> none of your favorite Star Trek characters is lacking in courage. Mm, but um, which yeah, which except captain. For- Reginald Barkley, I guess. He's We're not going to discuss Barclay. Reginald Barkley. <laughs> uh, let me start again. None of your favorite <laughs> Star Trek characters is lacking in courage, but which mm. captain lacks a Y chromosome? Um, the Captain Janeway. That is correct. I mean, come on. It's super easy. Star Trek Voyager. I named my dog Neelix. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, to be fair, I, I named my dog Neelix because I thought it was a good dog name. And because I was torn between Neelix and Worf, and my dog is has the courage of Reginald Barkley having to <laughs> teleport down to a planet. So that right there was a deep cut joke for very serious Star Trek fans. <laughs> Oops, then I shouldn't have laughed. Because I'm not a nerd. Uh, yeah, well, I think you've showed your hand. What do we got today? <laughs> Believe it or not, Dave, it's time for some Rush. Fair enough. I'm always right. for some rush. I, I... Uh, one cool thing about the this song here, it's one of the newer songs. Remember, now the fans have they've been critical of of me just a little. Half of them have been somewhat understanding. John, we know what you're talking about with Rush, with the signature, t- you know, time signature changes, and particularly with those breaks, with those left turns, like I call them, right turns, U turns, and those complete melodic breaks. I love that stuff. Um, this song we just listened to had a pretty cool melodic break. You know, that I'm not going to mention it because it's going to be the wrong order. But you know, uh, <laughs> but enough. anyway, but but there's a lot of music that's interesting, and part of it is because of these weird breaks or these changes that they do mm-hmm. within the song. I love that. Uh, so I do know this song because again, I've seen Rush in concert enough times, and I think this is a pleasant. I think this is an interesting, pleasant song, but I haven't really fully examined it, neither musically nor lyrically. Okay. So, so I know the song. I can even sing along with parts of it, I'm sure. Um, but it's it's interesting to that the focus that we put on the music when we stick it there right in front of us like that. So uh, let's let's grow with Rush together, shall we? Oh, one interesting note. This would be an evident. This would be a a, a song where Alex Lifeson is playing. A PRS guitar. Was Does that, that mean anything to you? No. Nope. PRS. Paul Reed Smith. Um, PRS guitars are made or manufactured uh, right near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge on the uh, peninsula of Del Marva. Oh, that's cool. Good old, good old East Coast. Yeah. Uh, all right. It says Rush, Ghost of a Chance. So here we go. Of a chance. 
nice little fill there. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about this for a second. So, so far, musically, some interesting things. Um, yes. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Um, it, it almost in some ways reminds me of the Beach Boys. Some of their stylings, uh, some of their guitar riffs make me feel like, and here's why, because some of my the guitarists make me feel like it's a, like that surfer song, um, Wipeout. And I don't oh. know why, but <laughs> but occasionally they'll just have a guitar riff, and I'm like, that's totally reminiscent of like, you know, I want to be in California on the surf, bro. Um, hmm. But that's not to say it's bad at all. That's just the weirdness that is my brain. From a lyrical perspective, um, I think this is very what I've come to expect from Rush, and. I I think that it's it's clear that we have a very consistent lyric writer for a lot of Rush's songs. Oh yeah, it's, um, it's almost exclusively Neil Peart. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense because here we have like basically the story is we make a lot of choices in our lives. Um, and, and it was said very well though, very poetically. I loved in the beginning that you had your, uh, all of life's a stage. Uh, so you had your Shakespeare reference and, you know, going through many doors and a number of references to making choices throughout your life. Um, I love the line where he said, uh, despite the masquerade, we still managed to find each other. You know, the, despite the masks we all wear, Mm -hmm. um, we still manage to connect with each other as human beings. Mm -hmm. um, it. I was with him the whole time. He was like, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. And then he said he didn't believe in stars and planets. And I was like, yeah, but those are real, man. <laughs> um, and then I realized he's talking about astrology. He's talking exactly. about, yeah, the stars and planets dictating something to do with your life because you happen to be born when they were at a spot. Um, uh, Pert right. and I get along in a lot of ways, is what I'm saying. I, I, I jive with his lyrical stylings. Um, so, uh, yeah, so far, I, I just think that the entirety of the lyrics have really been about how, despite all of these things, you can still choose to meet someone and love them and settle down and enjoy the short amount of time we have to exist together, uh, to drop yeah. the facade uh, and to just do it. And it's not a right or wrong because it's not a destiny. It's not a fate. Like it was just a series of choices you made. It got you here. So drop the mask and enjoy it. Um, that's where I'm at so far. So I guess we'll see what happens next. <laughs> Continue. play a lot of games. This song reminds me of Cinderella Man. I don't think I've seen that. No, it, it's it's another Rush song. Um, you know what? That's going to have to be the next one we do after this because this <laughs> song so reminds me of Cinderella Man in certain ways. I really like how he goes through this whole thing of I don't necessarily believe in all this. You make lots of choices. And then the moment he gets to like, but uh, even after all that, we find ourselves in a state of grace. And like the music mimics the lyrics. And I think Rush has done this many times to me where they do such a good job of having the music mimic the lyrics. Yeah. Um, so, uh, very good. <laughs> They're in tune with one another.
It was good. It was it was good rush. Uh, it was not, you know, their their eight minute multiple epics kind of rush, but it was no. very still good. Clean. A little over five, though. A little over five. It minutes. was a little over five. <laughs> um, you did feel like you had not necessarily full on different movements, but you had different moods of the song. You had yeah. the grace mood and you had the the choice mood is what I would call them. And How was Neil Peart's love life? Did he like get married, stay married, live happy? Well, there's there's a bit of tragedy in Neil Peart's life, and I will I will only give you the outline because I don't know the full complete details without having to go back and read up on it. The outline is this: he was kind of a, a one woman guy. Um, he and his his first wife had a daughter, and I'm. I don't know if she's the only child they had. I, she may well be the only child they had. Tragedy struck twice in a short period of time. His wife died of cancer. His daughter died in a car accident. Wow. Yeah. Um, he kind of went off the rails. and Yeah. <laughs> he basically yeah. disappeared on his motorcycle for a year and wrote a book about it, which I hope to read someday. Um, I'm kind of surprised you haven't read it. Um, well, I mean, when, when it comes down to it, there's, I mean, I'm going to change subjects here. So before I do that, before I like, <laughs> um, uh, then uh, after a period of time, apparently I believe, as I've heard, and, and I don't know where he did eventually meet another woman and, uh, married, I think eventually, and they stayed together up until he passed away. Mm. So yeah, he's definitely... He's the kind of guy that probably doesn't understand parts of the rock and roll lifestyle where you throw your your loved ones aside like trash. I mean, good is what I have to say about it. You mean he's a decent human being? Basically, yeah, he's a decent human being. I, that yeah. makes that makes me like him even more. Now I want to read his book. What's it called? I, uh, he, I mean, I assume you don't know off that. He's written a few, and I will I'll get all those titles to you. But I'm sure our good people, our good watchers our good viewers will post links for us r right down there dave right right <laughs> right in the comment section right down yeah. there in the comment section I, to um, these books that specific book i would be fascinated to read because you know here's a man who who has pretty clearly defined beliefs that you can track through his music and i would love to see um how he stayed true to them through loss and tragedy. Um, I think that'd be very fascinating, his thoughts, given his mindset on on what he went through. So, yeah, I, I want to read that book. I'm fascinated. Hmm. Um, but well, musically, lyrically, uh, I mean, yeah. good good rush. Would listen to again. Uh, would, would most definitely slap onto a playlist and thoroughly enjoy. That's what I have to say about that. And that came off of the 2004 album, Roll the Bones. And I have to say, of all the post- 90s rush i've enjoyed roll the bones the album the most so far well we did the titular uh song there roll the bones and i and we also that one. we also did um bravado oh yeah, yeah yeah we did rush is fascinating because sometimes i think pert really like obfuscates his lyrics and then sometimes like this one he telegraphs it like it, oh, yeah. it, it's not hidden. Here it is. Here's what I think. Yeah. Here's he what bought I a billboard. He posted his thoughts up on mm -hmm. it and we can all see what he's thinking. Yeah. And both are good. And no matter which way he goes, he still has a way of keeping it poetic. Um, mm -hmm. even with how obvious this one was. So yeah, rock on. I'm uh, definitely down with more rush. All right, friends, keep those rush requests coming and, uh, Dave, I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the... Literalist Reactions. I hope you get a kick out of watching it.